here at RionNet, we do a lot of technical support. And in fact, that's part of our commitment to you as a customer, to be able to answer your questions along the way, whether you have problems or questions about a process. Probably the most common problem and question people have is with the emulsion coating process. The emulsion can be a pain in the butt if you're not doing things right. So this section is going to troubleshoot what can go wrong with emulsion, so maybe you can weed out some of those variables. The first thing that we're going to talk about is coating the screen. Now, a typical quart of emulsion can coat between maybe 20, 25, maybe 30 screens. We've had people call that have coated three screens with a quart of emulsion. Now, three screens with this much emulsion, that's a lot of emulsion per screen. The problem is, is if you get too much emulsion on your screen, it's very hard to expose, it drips all over the place, you're wasting money in your emulsion, and you're having a lot of problems during the exposure process. So here's the first troubleshooting point. When you're coating your screen, you want to put pressure on your scoop coater. Don't be afraid to press against this screen. Here, let me demonstrate. If I'm doing the emulsion coating process wrong, I'm going to be afraid to put pressure on this screen. So what I've seen a lot of people doing is not allowing the emulsion to slip all the way onto the mesh and build up a dam. So when you try to, to uh, pull the scoop coater up, you're actually not getting a coat of emulsion on the screen. Um, also, let's show what happens if you don't put enough pressure on the mesh. So remember, as in the earlier section, you want to hear that little zip. If you don't hear that, this is what happens. So I see a lot of screens coated like this the first time. So look at that. You have emulsion dripping all the way onto the frame. You didn't even get some emulsion on the frame, when really, you should coat like this. You see how much pressure I'm putting on that? You can really feel the pressure coming onto the frame. But going like this, not putting enough pressure, you're going to have all sorts of problems. You're going to see inconsistencies in your emulsion. Your emulsion is going to be way too thick. And then you're going to get a mess all over the place. Not to mention the fact that you're wasting money in emulsion. So if we then put this screen upside down to dry, we'd have this emulsion dripping all over the place onto other screens and becoming a real pain in the butt to work with. The other thing is, if you have a thick coat of emulsion on your screen, you see how much emulsion is there, and that's only one side. So if we put more emulsion on the back side, think of how much longer this has to expose versus emulsion coat that's thin. Now granted, remember when we saw the white video, and, and let me reference you to the screen printing white video that talks about using a thick coat of emulsion and how to properly do that in order for a good ink deposit on your shirt. But this is not the right way to do this, and this is a lot of the problems people have when they get going coating their screens, is they put way too much emulsion on it. So the, the point of this lesson is to make sure to push tight on your scoop coater and hear that zip as it comes up the frame. That's the most important part in the coating process. If you don't do that, you can have too much emulsion on your screen and run into problems. Let's go to the next part. The next thing we'll discuss in troubleshooting is actually the emulsion itself. And when you're using a dual cure diazonal emulsion, remember the emulsion have a sh has a shelf life of about three months. So if your emulsion expires, you can have problems during the exposure process. The other thing you cannot let your emulsion do is freeze. If the emulsion freezes at any point in time, it will deactivate and be very, very hard to use, if not impossible to use. Here's an example of some emulsion that's starting to go bad. You see it starts to clump up and become discolor discolored. You see clumps starting to form on the bottom of the emulsion. Now, granted, this emulsion right here is still probably good and we could get away with exposing with it, but as an emulsion starts to go bad, it's going to become more clumpy and more clumpy, thicker, harder to work with, it's going to actually coat uh, solids on your screen rather than coating just a liquid emulsion, and it's not going to expose very well. You want to make sure to date your emulsion once you mix the diazo into it. That way you know when it's starting to reach its threshold point and will be close to expiring. Remember, three to four months, so if you have that three month point, you also want to make sure to have another quart of emulsion, another gallon of emulsion ready to go in case this one goes bad, you have that ready to go and can start using that immediately. Storage temperatures, you don't want to get too cold. If it freezes, remember it's completely bad, and then you don't want to get it too hot. If it's in a hot room, it will expire a lot sooner. So you want to keep emulsion in a 60, 70 degree room, not much colder, not much warmer. Always keep the lid on it, and always keep it in the dark for safe precaution, even though these um, containers are pretty uh, solid black. But having it in a cool, dark place is always optimal for your emulsion.